Who is going to win the Rotterdam Open? We got the Paris Bros on right away. It's good to see you guys. What's your pick? We're on live. What's going to be the pick? I thought this Rotterdam Open, by the way, really good tournament. And it kind of gives us an idea when the big three are gone. I know we're all worried about the big three leaving. Roger, who's going to be back in a couple of days. We'll be talking a lot about that. Roger, Novak, Rafa. You know, when they leave, what's the tour going to be like? Well, this week gave us a good idea of what the tour is going to be like. And I thought we saw a lot of awesome tennis. You know, Sissy Paz had a great, great tournament, but was stopped yesterday by Rublev. And Fukovic is now in the final. Who would have seen that coming in the beginning of the tournament? He's going to go in the final. So we're going to see a lot of unpredictable stuff, I think, when the big three leave. You know, the, the big three are very predictable. The rest of the tour, not so predictable, but still a lot of amazing talent. And so we've got a big match today, Fugovic versus Rublev. And uh, what's your pick? And I think, you know, a lot of people know who Rublev is. We know we know the skill. We know he's out there. Scrawny little guy, big game. I don't know if I've ever seen a little guy hit the ball so hard. Diego Schwartzman hits the ball pretty hard for a little guy, but... Rublev takes it to another level. Serve is big. Forehand's big. Backhand's big. Puts everything into every shot. But Fukovic, I got I got a little inside baseball on Fukovic. I got to watch him play last year at the uh, Australian Open fourth row Rod Laver Arena playing the great Roger Federer. And guess what? For the first set, Fukovic out Federered Federer, and he's very good. So I actually have some match footage between Rublev and Fukovic. I'm going to show you here in a second. Let's go to the um, – let's go to my screen. I'm going to share the screen with you guys. And we're going to take a look, first of all, at the head-to-head. -head. going to have a sip of my milk. And so we hit, take a look at the head-to-head -head here, and we see that's 1-1. One, one. And Rublev has really been having a great year, very consistent, had a good Australian Open in the finals here. He's got to love the year, the, the way his year is going. Had a big win yesterday against Sissipas, who Sissipas played a great tournament, played his heart out. I think he just ran out of gas against Rublev, and Rublev is amazing. So Rublev plays great, and Sissipas is not at the absolute top of his game. He's going to lose. Sissipas has to play great to beat Rublev. He played pretty good, didn't play terrible. Rublev is just awesome, and he, he just crushes the ball. Now, Martin Fuskovic, Fukovic, uh, he is 59 in the world, and he is 29 years old. They're one and one in matches. So we got 23-year-old versus a 29-year-old. And I can tell you that I'm surprised – that this guy has not had bigger wins in his career. When you watch his game, a lot of game. That That's what we can say about a lot of the ATP pros, right? Who you watch play, you're like, they're so good. Why don't they have bigger wins? Why don't they win more? I don't know. I really don't know when you watch them play. They're pretty awesome. We can see the uh, scores they played at Roland Garris. Super tight match. Uh, first set went to, to Martin. Second set. Uh, Andre got that, 7-5, 6-4, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, very tight match. And then Fukovic won the match before, 6-2, five setter. They've also played at the, uh, the Futures, okay? But what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to share the screen. We're going to blow it up, and uh, I'm going to be quiet for a couple seconds so you guys can hear the intensity of this. This is actually a Davis Cup match. And uh, kind of a cool uh, perspective on this match, too, as far as from the crowd here. So you can hear the crowd. going to turn this up so you can really hear the crowd and see the quality of tennis and watch the variety. All right. So we got Rublev here, Fukovic here. Watch the variety in, in um, Fukovic. I really like the way he plays. Wow. 
There's the slice. Another slice. Good pass down the line. Small but intense crowd. You hear that? I hope you guys can hear this and see this pretty good. That slice again down the line. Look at that. So you see, Vukovic really smooth, guys. Really smooth game. Uses the slice backhand a lot. He's got a two-hander, but he uses that slice a lot. We'll watch a couple more points. Crowd is going nuts. <laughs> Second serve. He better make his first serve today against Vukovic. Boom. There's that slice again. <laughs> He's frustrating Rublev. Frustrated him. Look at that. What a match. Well, we got to finish the match here. Big forehand. Oh, so you can see Rublev, he never takes his foot off the gas. So we're going to see more variety coming off Fukovic today and just uh, Rublev just crushing balls. I think that's the matchup. Good get. Look at that defense. Oh. Woo. Oh. Wow. <laughs> what a point. That would have been a cool match to be at. Come on. Come on. Love it. That's Davis Cup, baby. Too bad Davis Cup is kind of waning in his popularity. So cool. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. All right. Let's we'll stop sharing the screen. Come back to you guys now. All right. Cool. Wasn't that awesome? Got to turn that down. That was pretty awesome stuff. So who is going to win today, guys? I, I think what we can see is if they play like that and if they play like they've played in the past, it's going to be super tight, super close match. They have Every time they've played, it's been super tight, very close tennis, and a fun matchup to watch, as you guys can see. Different styles. Rublev pretty much straight ahead. You know what you're going to get. He's going to be hitting big the entire match. He's going big tennis. The little guy plays big tennis. Bukovic, the bigger guy, he plays more variety. He slices more. Amazing defense. He can rev it up, too. So he's like a 10-speed bike. He, he uses different paces, different spins. He loves to use the slice. Comfortable coming to the net. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. And um, if you, Bukovic really has gone through this tournament very nicely. Uh, beat Cork the other day pretty easily, pretty handily. So that's a big win. And uh, Kort kind of plays a little bit like Rublev, you know, uh, not the biggest guy in the world, but plays big tennis, likes to kind of go out. Um, I hate to call Rublev one-dimensional, but he he's kind of one speed, and that's fast. I don't really see him ever really use a lot of variety in paces. He just 
crushes. Uh, and it looks like Vukovic kind of likes that. He kind of likes that pace coming at him. Now they're playing indoors, so it's a little different. The ball, that you know, was clay we were looking at, and they played twice on clay on the tour. And so, you know, is it a good indicator how the match will go? Maybe, maybe playing indoors, ball will go through the through the court a little faster. Um, that might favor Rublev. Might favor Rublev a little bit. Uh, so um I think it's going to be a great match. I think the Rotterdam Open was very interesting this year. I liked I liked the look of that indoor court they had too. Um, sometimes, you know, of course we miss the crowds, but sometimes it's nice to kind of hear what's going on. You can hear the the players, uh, you know, pump pumping themselves up more, hear the ball a little more, uh, just kind of get a little more intimate feel for the match. There's nothing like the replacement of the crowd, right? That was pretty cool to see the crowd that we were just listening to. I mean, that's a, you know, they're both different. But uh, I think it's going to be a, a very good match. I, I really like the Rotterdam Open this year. That match is on clay. It is hard, so we can, yeah. So Jace is basically saying, yeah, it's hard. Clay suits Fukovic more with his defense. So maybe the offense, maybe that they're playing indoors might favor Rublev. Rublev in general has been hotter, right? He's been the hotter player this year. It's kind of hard to uh, say uh, who deserves it more. Martin's paid his dues. He's 59 in the world. He's been a, a veteran on the tour. He's 29 years old. You know this is a big moment for him to get to this final. He really wants it. Rublev, I think he really wants to make his move this year. He's going, okay, I'm... Eight in the world. I did great at the Australian Open. Now I'm in the finals. I got to convert. You know, these people have the potential. Rublev is one of those people. Uh, Martin Fukovic is not one of those people. Rublev is one of those people that towards the tail end of Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic could sneak in there and be top three, maybe number one in the world after they leave. When he was a junior, did you know that he was number one in the world? Uh, as a junior, he was the ITF number one player in the world. So he kind of knows what it feels like to be the top dog. He kind of knows what that pressure feels like from an early age to be the one holding the crown. And so uh, he could be one of those guys. He has the potential to be number one in the world someday, Rublev. And I would think if you're him, you're like, okay, this is something I've got to prove myself. I've got to go out. The top three are not here. Um I should go out and win this match. I have to win this match. This this will be a big confidence builder for me if I can go out and just kind of take care of business. I'm the favorite here. I've got momentum on my side. I'm grooming myself to be in the top five. I want to be number one in the world one day. I got to win this match. I would think that's how he's thinking. I hope that's how he's thinking. Vukovic is like, man, this is this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I, I've been I've been grinding. I've been grinding my whole life. I've been grinding my whole life. And now I have a chance to win a big tournament against a guy I know I can beat. I know I can beat this dude. I beat him before. We've played super close matches. I know his game. I know what I'm going to get. I know he's coming at me, and I, I like to play some good defense. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Who do you guys like? Rublev more consistent at the moment. Vukovic hot and cold. That's true. He's hot and cold, but he's hot this week. And I saw him hot against Federer. I don't know if you guys saw that in the beginning. I saw Vukovic play Federer at the Australian Open, fourth row, Rod Laver Arena. It was awesome. And in the first set, I was even saying to myself, oh, my God, Federer is so awesome. No one plays like Federer. Look at his game. He's amazing. And he lost the first set. That's how good Vukovic is because I didn't even think Federer was playing that bad. It was just like they were both playing great. And all of a sudden, you look at the scoreboard, and Vukovic won the first set 6-3. And I didn't even think Fed. I was in awe of that. I'm like, man, he's so awesome. Look at all the shots he's hitting. It's different when you're right there, guys. And and I looked up at the scoreboard. I'm like, oh, Federer lost the first set. How'd the awesome Fed lose the first set? Because Vukovic got game. That's how. But then Fed, you know, you know what Fed does. You know what he does. He's a winner. He doesn't go out and lose. He just won the match. Rublev, top five material, needs to work more on his net skills. Yes, Vukovic, pretty good at the net. Vukovic, pretty good all over the court. He likes to slide back, play some defense, give you some slices. He likes to pass you. 
He likes to come in. He's got a little more game as far as more interesting to watch, I think. Rublev's one speed. He's coming at you like a bulldog. So, um, but I like the way Rublev plays too. I kind of like that he's, you know, 140 something, 150 something pounds, and he's just all power. It's kind of interesting to watch a guy that small hit the ball that hard and just come after you. So uh, I like Rublev too. I like both these guys. I, the more I watch tennis, I realize I like everybody. I like all these players. They're all so good. They're all so talented. Why can't they just all win every tournament? You know, really not rooting against anybody here, guys. Vukovic is Iron Man of tennis. I swear he never gets tired. Well, that's a big that's a big statement from Ali Payton. He never gets tired, and they've had a long week. You know, they're, they've it, it's it's interesting to win a Grand Slam. You're thinking, well, that's so tough to do because you got to win seven matches over two weeks and you got to play three out of five set match. But this tournament in particular, I thought was a very physical tournament, a lot of physical matches. Uh, I think it's good for Rublev. Rublev had a tough match, uh, went three sets. And who did he beat? I think he beat Chardin, three very tough sets. And one of you guys told me that he looked very tired towards the end of that match. But then he played Sissy Poss. He played really good against Sissy Poss. Sissy Poss, I think, a little tired. Would you guys agree with that? And I called that. I don't call them all, guys. But I did call that one. I did call that one. I, I said, I think Sissy Poss can be a little too tired. Uh, I think Sissy Poss can be proud of his performance. I know he's probably down. I know he really wanted to win this tournament, too. He, he's looking to prove himself in 2021. But... I think we got to give Sissy Poss a pass. We kind of beat up on these next geners, uh, but he won two really gutsy performances, both 7 5 in the third, back to back. Then to go play Rublev, who's playing great tennis and really comes after you. I think you give Sissy Poss the benefit of the doubt there and say, Good job, Sissy Poss. You're playing great tennis. Don't keep your head, don't, don't drop your head. Keep your head up. You're doing the right thing. You're playing positive. You got a good mentality. Get some rest. And let's go again and do even better next tournament. That's what I say to my man, Sissy Paz. I watch a lot of him. His cardio is amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. So we know Fukovic is in shape. He's in shape. He's a he's a veteran. And you know what? I mean, Rublov's kind of a veteran, guys. He's 23, but he's got a lot of miles on his tennis already. He, he has been number one ITF player in the world. So... He knows what it feels like to be a, I mean, really all those pros, you know, we always think about when did he turn pro, but really when you're a junior and you have a chance to be a pro, you're, you're almost like a pro by the time you're like 14, 15, you, you just, you just know you're that good and you're grooming yourself to go on the challengers and, and there's certain expectations put on you from an early age. So you, you're used to walking around with pressure. Uh, and so. Rublev has felt that for a long time. Fugu has felt that for a long time. This is both a big opportunity. I think, I think that if I had to pick this match, because so here comes my pick. Because it's indoors, you can hit through the court more. I think it's going to favor Rublev, and I think Rublev really, really wants this. I think he's going, man. I really, really want this because I think. He's thinking the next level for me is to figure out to get into the top five. And I think once he thinks he can get into the top five, he's thinking, how can I get in the top three? And maybe, just maybe, in a year or two, better is gone. The Dow, you know, you never know. I mean, guys, just a couple of years ago, look how, look how um, unbeatable Djokovic is right now. Do you guys remember a couple of years ago when he came back from his injury? I think it was his wrist or his shoulder. I think both. Do you remember he was struggling to win sets? It wasn't long ago that Djokovic confidence and not being back full physically where he was really soul searching. He had Agassi as his coach. <clears throat> that just didn't work out. Not blaming Agassi. But that didn't work out. And he had, he, he, and, he, and he even, I watched a video the other day where his wife was doing an interview with that Graham, uh, Graham Norton guy, I think. 
And she did an interview where he, she said that he retired for 10 days. He came to, to the family and said, I'm done. You know, I don't know how we should handle this. Should, should we um, talk to my sponsors? Like, I want to leave the right way. I don't want to leave anybody hanging, but I am done. He retired for 10 days because I think he just lost a lot of confidence. He's just like, what am I doing? And then he finally, she actually brought her uh, the kids out to play some tennis. and. Djokovic visited the court and saw how much fun they were having, that they were loving tennis, and it brought his love back. And then he went back to his coach, Marion Vita, and said, you know, I need you to come with me. I, I, I got to make a – I'm not going to retire, but let's do this. I need my old coach back. I need my, own te my old team back. That was a difference, brought back his confidence, and now we see he's back to unbeatable Djokovic. But why am I saying this? I'm saying this because – it's just one injury away for Nadal or Djokovic. We don't want we don't want that to happen. But we both know that they've they've gotten some pretty serious injuries in the past. There was a time where Rafael Nadal, the great Rafael Nadal, did not win a tournament for 18 months. Did you guys know that? Federer's approaching 40. Rublev's got to be looking at this window like if I can win this tournament, it's showing me that I can now start to play consistent. I had a great Australian Open. Now I'm in the finals. I got to take care of business. I got to keep getting points. I got to fight my way in the top five. And I just got to look for opportunities to see if I can sneak in the top three. And then who knows where I'll be in one, two, three years. You know, he's at a great age right now where if he does not let his foot off the pedal in, in, in one to three to five, even five years, he's even got five you know, where he could, he could be number one in the world. Rublev could totally be number one in the world. I'm not saying he's going to be like a dominant number one, like Federer or Djokovic or Nadal, where he's just like number one for like years and years and totally unbeatable. But he could definitely have his name up at the very top and have a number one ATP ranking. That's what I think. So I think that Rublev's got to win this tournament if he wants to be the man. He's been the man before. As a junior, he was number one in the world. So that's why I am picking. Andre Rublev to win this tournament. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Be happy for either of them. You know, Fukovic paid his dues, plays amazing tennis, has the game. We saw in the beginning the highlights I showed. He's got the game to beat anybody, but especially somebody. I think it's hard when you got one speed, bam, bam, you're a bone crusher tennis guy. And you can play somebody who switches gears on you, can slice, can slide, can play defense. And then if you just, you know, then all of a sudden you make an unforced error. If you, or if you just run out of, if you're like a heavyweight boxer throwing three or four haymakers and they come back and you just take a shot off, right? You just take a little bit off the ball. Vukovic is the kind of guy who can flip it on you. He can flip the script on you and then take offense on you. So going to be good. Going to be good. I need more predictions here, guys. You guys are not you guys are not giving me enough predictions. I see we got a good amount of people on here right now. I want some predictions. I'm picking Rublev. Who are you picking before we leave? Who are you picking? Are you picking Rublev? Are you picking Fukovic? And how about Rublev's forehand? How about Rublev's forehand? You know what I'm getting ready to do? Let me see if I can create a, a quick little banner real quick. Let me see if I can do it real quick. So we'll do this. And, and I'm getting ready to do a seven-day forehand challenge. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, here we go. New banner. So go to seven-day forehand challenge.com. Bam. If you would like, if you would like to improve your forehand, because we can see on the tour, the forehand is big. It is big. In fact, coming up at 10 o'clock today, I'm releasing a new video, the inside in versus inside out forehand. Because look at the pros. They'll run They'll run to the damn doubles alley to hit a forehand. That's how big the forehand is on the tour. So if you're actually out here and you're watching this and you also play tennis, you can sign up for my seven-day forehand challenge. Go to sevendayforehandchallenge.com and you can get free training on the forehand. We can get free train on the forehand. Let's see if we have some new comments. Okay, so we've got Young Whippersnapper is picking Rublev. Jason Lane is picking Rublev, okay? 
or, or born, born Jason or Jane, Jason Bourne picking Rublev. Sorry. Uh, the, 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 Brian is picking if Rublev doesn't lose his cool, he wins. So everybody's picking Rublev. If, okay, now John is saying if Fukovic plays his usual softballs, Rublev will eat him up. Eat him up. That's a big one. He's going to eat him up. Fukovic has an outside chance if Rublev is missing. That's true. You know, those defensive artists can make you miss. They can make you miss. Like Muhammad Ali, what did he do? Miss the punches, then he'd knock you out. That's the way kind of Fukovic plays. He lets you take your swipes, and then he comes back at you. That's what he did against Cork. Go watch Go watch those um, highlights on YouTube. We can see the Korch would come, bam, 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 move Fukovic around. He, Fukovic sliced that backhand. Gets a, get a defensive stab on the forehand side, then come back with his own offense. That's why I like to watch Fukovic play, but I think you guys are right. I think Rublev is going to win this tournament. I'll be happy for him. I kind of like the guy. The more I'm watching him, watching some interviews, I like this guy. He's kind of a cool dude. I like him. I like him. And I think that he is getting some more confidence. Any last second picks? Any questions? And if you want to improve your forehand, go to 7dayforehandchallenge.com. If you love tennis, hit that subscribe button. Rublev really the only one speed seemingly. Yeah, he, he does. But it's a big speed. That's the thing, too. Can you be number one, even though he hits the ball so hard, can you be number one that small and your only game is really the power game? I hate to kind of like label him, but when I'm watching him play, I'm just like, he just, which is impressive. It's I'm amazed by it. He's just like once he just comes at you constantly. And he just sets that forehand up. Rawr, he lets out a big scream every time he hits, and it's all it's going big. So um, but I don't really see him changing the pace too much. Fukovic will win, also will crush. <laughs> okay, that's a there's some big picks picks here. Okay, so Renga is saying Fukovic will win. He's also going to crush better in Doha this week. Okay, that's a big one. That's a big pick right there. What do you guys think? Let's talk about that for a little second. Second, before we leave here, what do you guys think about Federer's chances in Doha? He's been off for a long time. I watched an Instagram video the other day where Federer said, I feel good. I've been getting good practice. I want to thank my team for getting me prepared. I don't know what's going to happen this week, he kind of said. He kind of hinted like, it's just, I'm just excited to be back. But is Federer just going to come back and be Federer? Are we going to see some rust? Are we going to see some rust from the great one? Or is he just going to be the maestro like he always is? Going to walk on that court like he never left? How does he do that? How do you leave the tour like he's done a couple times now? Now he's in his later 30s. He's done it a couple times. He did it at the Australian Open. Left the tour for almost a year back then too. Came back. Maestro's back. Uh, I, I'll just I'll just work my way back in the top three. No problem. <laughs> right? So – is Federer going to come back and do what he's always done? Is he just going to be fed? Or are we going to start to now start to see like, ooh, is Fed slipping a little bit? Is that timing off a little bit? Is he not as fast as he used to be? Is he not as hungry as he used to be? Is that forehand sprain? Like, what are we going to see from Fed? Or is Fed just going to come out next week and be like, this is like an exhibition for me. Like, Doha, it's like a warm-up tournament, and I'm walking away with a trophy. Easy. What do we think? What do we think? What do you expect from Fed next week? Let me have some comments on Fed next week. What do you guys think? Come on. Give me a couple comments on Fed before we leave. Or if you're watching the uh, the replay, give me some comments on what Fed is going to do in Doha. I think you never bet against Fed. That's what I think. I think Fed's going to go out there next week and just be Fed. He's just going to go out there. No problem. No problem. That's what I think Fed's going to do next week in Doha. Go out there and crush have a great tournament minimum very minimum semi-final performance the very minimum he's getting to the semi-finals that's what i think what do you think of federer and the dow what do they have to do to beat djokovic i don't know that's a tough question i mean what the dow has to do to beat djokovic these days say hey um can you meet me on clay at the french open Novak, can you let's meet there and go play? That's what Nadal has to do. Like get him on clay. He's still the best by far. Better uh what he has to do is play like perfect tennis and 
when he loses to those guys, Nadal and Djokovic, he kind of does what what uh, what Fukovic has did to Cork, right? To where you know he'll he'll play great points, but then just not finish. You know, he he gets passed in the end, or he or his forehand shanks. That's kind of what happens to Feds. Like he's always when Federer is going to play Djokovic and Nadal, he's always going to be in control of the point. He's always the offensive guy, which is a lot of pressure to do. That's what's hard to be Rublev is to always play. Sorry, guys, I left you. <laughs> if you're watching this again and you're still there, thanks for watching. I'm going to uh, leave now, though. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do great. Sorry that I lost you. My computer crashed on me. But enjoy the match. I think it's just getting started. Enjoy the tennis. And we'll see you guys on the next video.